before you're seated, before you're seated, I am I'm blessed, I'm honored and blessed to be back, man. And just, just a stirring, I'm having a moment here, give me a second. Yeah, I'm just gonna share, just there's a, there's a, there's, there's like a strong, anno- the presence of, are there any questions? God's here, man. Just God's here, the presence of God is here. So I just want you to help me recognize, y'all, this, the legacy of this church, historically, I was talking to Pastor Paul about the prophetic presence. Back in the early 1990s, this church was leading the way in, in bypassing the bureaucracies of, of cultural myopia and having multi-ethnic ex- church, and you all were, you're prophetic. You, you're always leading the way. This is not your normal cup of tea. This, is, this house is special, it really is. This is not like rhetorical affirmation to make you feel good. But you guys literally changed church in America, changing church around the world. So, and now with this generation, with Pastor Sharon, of course, and her legacy mantle, but I want you to help me honor the best pastors on the planet right now. Pastor Paul, Pastor Ashley, right here. Love you. Love you, honor you, respect you. You guys are amazing. I mean, you're you're crazy. I mean, you really are cuckoo. Because you're you're still committed to preaching Jesus. You don't water down the gospel. You're not weird, but you're wired. And and you preach Jesus, and you don't quench the spirit, and you, you get it. So continue to be you. Just continue and, and y'all, how many really believe the best is yet to come? All right, be, 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 before you're seated, before you're seated, just it's gonna sound really awkward. What you're about to say as an affirmation is gonna sound really awkward, but you need to trust me on this. Subsequently, we'll biblically substantiate it, but I need you to touch someone around you that doesn't like to be touched. No, no, touch somebody around you and tell that person, go wash yourself. That's awkward. I told you it was awkward, but you'll get it in a second. Go wash yourself. You you may be seated. You may be seated. I have a couple of assistants here today, Pastor Mark. And I brought one of our campus pastors, a uh, pastor, Nathan. He happens to have, by coincidence, my last name, Rodriguez. In, yeah, by coincidence, things like that happen, right? When I procreate with your mother. <laughs> so they're gonna, <laughs> that got really awkward really quick, <laughs> which I'm not gonna, but you'll stop right there. I won't, I won't. I'm just saying, just, just, it's a moment. Jo- <laughs> That's my son, get that, just for, 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 from anyone from Nevada, not getting the joke, he's my son. It's just, John chapter nine. Here's what God placed in my spirit for you. John chapter nine. I'm gonna skip over verses. I'm gonna go one, six, and seven. Here he goes. As Jesus was walking, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. That, that's important. That part right there that he was blind from birth is important. Because if you juxtapose this with Mark chapter 8, there's a very similar story, but the guy wasn't blind from birth. He lost his sight throughout the journey, and it was restoration, not this. Verse 6. Then We're going to illustrate this. Pastor Mark, get ready. Then Jesus spit on the ground. That's messy. That's like holy Listerine, Batman. He made mud with the saliva. More messy. And spread the mud over the blind man's eyes. Spread the mess. Verse 7. He told them, go wash yourself. See, that's the part. Go wash yourself. So the man went and washed and came back seen. I want to speak to you on the subject matter, messy miracles. The day your mess becomes your miracle. And the subtext would be, go wash yourself. Now, let me confess something. I am a bit OCD. I am, and my mind works in a very linear, sequential manner. For all the Trekkies out there, I preach revelation like Captain Kirk, but I process information like Spock. 
So I find it to be a bit challenging to reconcile what I perceive as chaos with order. In other words, how can a miracle emerge out of a mess? This is why this biblical narrative speaks to me because I have lived it. And permit me to begin by encouraging you to do the following. Number one, open your eyes to what you have never seen before. As Jesus was walking, he saw a man who had been blind from birth. This man was not losing his sight. This man did not lose his sight. He never had it in the first place. He was born blind. This circumstance facilitates the environment for Christ to reveal a functional, what is known as an ontological extension of the creative nature of providence. In other words, with the woman of the issue of blood, he gave her back her health. With the invalid man at Bethesda, he gave him back his walk. With Lazarus, he gave him back his life. With the other blind man that I alluded to in Mark chapter 8, he gave him back his sight. But with this man in John chapter 9, Jesus did not give him something he lost. He gave him something he never had in the first place. There's a difference between God restoring something you had and God giving you something you never had in the first place. Our God is not just a God that restores. Our God has the power to give you what you never had in the first place. He is the Lord of the new thing. Isaiah 43, 19, behold, I do a new thing. And some of us focus and we allocate our time in attempting to get back when we lost. We should, we, we should be asking God to give us what we never had in the first place. God is not interested in renovating your past. He is interested in releasing your future. So stop asking God to restore something he wants to give you a new version of. And, and I'm, I'm going to tell you why I'm having this moment. Because for America and for Tulsa, for, for this generation, we need to see something we haven't seen before. And we need to push back on what we're seeing now. And, and if this, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to apologize, man. I just feel a drive of the spirit. I don't think it's a coincidence that we're having this conference right after what happened in America. Matter of fact, I know, and it's going to sound awkward to you, and if you want to judge it, go ahead. I don't give a holy hoot. I know we're gathered here under divine appointment to push back. Let me explain. The enemy would like to see this nation blinded by discord and by violence and mass shootings and, and, and continual consternation and polarization. And, and that's what the enemy would love to just blind, continue to blind America. And, and matter of fact, the enemy would love the church to regurgitate the narrative of perpetual darkness and discord and division. And, and, and oh, but no, I'm going to flip the script because I believe we're about to see some... We're about to see, we're about to see an awakening in America like we've never seen before. I'm going to say that one more time till the devil gets a migraine. We're about to see an outpouring of the power of God in America like we've never seen before. We're about to see a Jesus movement in America like we've never seen before. Are you, if you believe it, give God a shout of praise if you actually believe it. I see a nation embraced by the Father, redeemed by the Son, and primed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. I see a people at the brink of revival. I see God's children getting ready. So forgive me, I'm not going to drink the Kool-Aid and the narrative of MSNBC and ABC and NBC and CBS, Univision y Telemundo. I'm going to declare, I declare the word of the Lord upon this nation. What does that mean? I see our children casting out devils in the name of Jesus. I see young men and women prophesying. I see Generation Z and millennials having visions. I see the X generation and the boomers having dreams. I see a move of God. I see the love of God, the truth of God, the grace of God, the power of God. I believe we're about to see God show up like we've never seen before. And, and I'm gonna prophesy that now. And, if, and, and I'm gonna declare it upon America. We're gonna flip the script. Matter of fact, in the name of Jesus, I believe a revival and an awakening, more people will come to Jesus in El Paso, Texas than ever before in the next. More people will come to Jesus in Dayton, Ohio than ever before. 
More people will come to Jesus in Parkland, Florida than ever before. God's about to show up. God will have the final word in each of our communities. 1 Corinthians 2, 9, what no eye has seen, no ear heard, the heart of many imagine God has prepared for those who love him. Raise your right hand. Just repeat after me. And repeat after me. I'm about to see what I've never seen before. Now, this confession is prophetic, so I want you to hear me. In my family, in my faith, in my finances, in my relationships, in my church, in my community, in my thinking, in my actions, in my words, in my health, in my surroundings, in my nation, in my generation, I'm about to see the glory of Jesus like I have never, ever, 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 ever seen before. If you believe that, praise like you believe it and shout like you believe it and clap like you believe it. Open your eyes to what you have never seen before. Open your eyes to God's spirit. What does that mean? Let's illustrate this. Then he spit on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud. That, that's an unorthodox method to facilitate a miracle. What a process. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes the process is messy. And to be very frank with you, sometimes the process is complicated, but here it is, the God of the outcome is the same God of the process. Let me repeat that for the hearing impaired. The God of the outcome is the same God of the process. And the process is temporary, but the promise is permanent. And do not make the temporary permanent. Do not make the process the promise. Do not confuse what you're going through with where you are going to. And permit me to remind you, if you are going through what you have never been through before, it's only because you're about to step into what you've never stepped into before. So this, this will preach now. There are a couple of elements here. First, he spits. He spits. My goodness, Jesus, spit. Holy spittle. He spit. Just, you spit. So we, close your eyes. You're blind. From this moment on, don't open up the eyes until I tell you to open up the eyes. So help us, God. Amen. So he, he spit. So your job, Pastor Nathan, is to spit. Is this allergy season for you? Mm -hmm. Good. It's more convenient for all of us. Not for Pastor Mark, but for the rest of us here. Careful what you sign up for, sunshine. <laughs> so he spit. Now, why would Jesus spit? I need to break this down for you. It, 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 in the saliva, the, the moment you hear spit or saliva, someone real quick, what's in the saliva? What is? Yeah, germ. Thanks a lot, Mr. Positive. Uh, Yes, DNA. Yes, you got it. D I said, Mr. Positive. It is DNA. So Jesus spits. Literally speaking, ladies and gentlemen, there's no rhema here. It's just pure science. He literally, Jesus placed his DNA on that man's DNA. Oh, you missed it. Like, this is not like, is that a rhema word? No. Like, literally speaking, he took his DNA and he placed it on him. No, I don't know if you get this. This is not DNA of, of, of just Joe Common. This is the DNA of the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Host of Hosts, the Prince of Peace, the Great I Am. In other words, hey, hey, sunshine, with your DNA, you're blind. With my DNA, you're about to see my glory. With your DNA, you are a victim. With my DNA, you are more than a conqueror. With your DNA, you are limited and you have weaknesses. With my DNA, you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength. So it's a transfer. 
He literally placed on him his DNA. I have news for every single person here right now. You do not have the spittle of Jesus. You have an upgrade. You have a lot more than his spit. Jesus died, resurrected, ascended, and transferred not his spit. My God, you have something greater in the spit of Jesus. I'm going to say that one more time. The reason the devil hates your gut is because you have something more than the spit of Jesus. Put a smile on your face. You don't have the spit of Jesus. You have the spirit of Jesus inside of you. Let me say that one more time. You have the spirit of Jesus inside of you. Are you with me? You have the spirit, not just any spirit, but the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of you. The spirit of God is in you. First John 2 27 Romans 8 11 that raised Jesus from the dead and that spirit changes everything. So he takes a spit, but it's not, now I want you to do this here. I want you to take some here, put some here, mix a little bit of this with this. And then I want you to get a, just a chunk there like your spit with, yeah, mud. <laughs> put it in your hands. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Hold on to that right there. All right, when I tell you to place it on his eyes, let me explain this. So he spits on the ground. <laughs> he spits on the ground and he makes m m mud ball, clay. And um, um, I need to put this in perspective. So you, so you have this DNA of Jesus, right? So Jesus takes his DNA, but he doesn't spit directly into him. That actually happened in Mark 8, the other guy. But with, but, but, but with, but with this guy, he, he, he doesn't do the same thing. There's a reason for that, by the way. And the reason he went boom first, and then he, and then woo. And the reason there was that process is because, hmm, what did, so why would Jesus, because, but no, he went true, and the hey, and the ha, but why? The question is why? This is real simple. What did God make man out of? Genesis 2, 7, what did God make man out of? So Jesus took his DNA. He connects it to his original design. And he connects his DNA and his original design. In other words, in my original plan, you are not blind. In my original plan, you are not an alcoholic. In my original plan, you are not a drug addict. In my original plan, are you with me right now? In my original plan, you don't go from one generational curse to the next generational curse. In my original plan, you go from glory to glory and blessing to breakthrough. Is there anybody here ready to see your entire family functioning under God's original plan? I'm going to ask one more time. Is there anyone here ready to see your children and your children's children and your children's children's children? What if I tell you tonight is the last night that your family will be under any other plan other than God's original plan? If you believe that, shout like you know it's all yours. The original plan, God has, he connected him to the Jeremiah 29 and 11, to the Psalm 138 verse 8, to the divinity, divine purpose. I'm going to connect you. I'm going to bring you back to the original plan. Oh, Señor, la gracia de Cristo, Padre. Oh, here we go. The plans of God, the original plan. Oh, I feel a moment right here. I, I, this is for somebody here, man. You're worried about somebody you love in your family. You're concerned. There's a bit of, there's a glitch in the proverbial matrix, which means there's a bit of deviant behavior that doesn't line up with God's will or word. And you're concerned with someone in your tribe, in your family. I have news for you. Stop worrying. No, I need you to hear me. Stop worrying. No, I really mean this. Like, there's a word of the Lord for you, and the word is simple. No worry. God's original plan will be fulfilled. God's original plan will come. Are you with me right now? It's going to happen. 
So he places it. He, we're going to hurt. He, he takes the plan. He's going to connect you to the original plan. And in the, in the original plan, you're not, you're, the, oh boy, I feel, in the original plan, you're not full of anxiety. In the original plan, you're not just perpetually depressed. In the original plan, you're not going from one health issue to the other. In the original plan, it's not there. In the name of Jesus, you're being connected. In the original plan, you're not the tail. You are the head in the original plan. Are you with me? So he connects him and then he spreads. He, all right, so here, so here's how I want you to do I want you to spread it. Here, let's do this. Let's have fun. Uh, ready? This is going to be fun. He, so this is, this is the DNA, the DNA of Jesus plus the original plan. And he's going to place it on the blind man who was born blind. Okay. Are there any questions? Pastor Mark, do you have any questions? No, sir. Spread away. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a Bible guy, so I, biblical exegetical extrapolation of the original language. You can't make things up. You have to preach the word, out of it be it Greek or Hebrew or Latin or even now with the TPT, the Aramaic, whatever. So it behooves us. The Bible says he spread it. So make a bigger mess, son. <sighs> Cover his eyelids. You missed a spot. Yep. Yep. And he spread it. That's. Yep. Yep. So, by the way, he was already blind. Jesus blinded him more. This is what we call a double blind study. <sighs> he blinded him to his blindness. Open your eyes to what you have never seen before. Open your eyes to God's original plan. That's number two. Number three, open your eyes to a holy mess. What does that mean? God will blind you to your blindness. God will blind your now in order to open your eyes to the next. Ask Paul, ask Saul, Paul, en route to Damascus. When you are so obsessed with what's happening now, he will cover your eyes as he was speaking metaphorically, prophetically, as he pushes you towards what you're going, what God's taking. Take your eyes off today's problems and open your eyes to tomorrow's promises. His tourniquet of mercy will rest on you as he operates with truth. Now, then he has the audacity, Jesus does. Look, this is so cool. This is gonna get, watch, the audacity of doing this. You're blind, dude, you were born blind, and I just blinded you more. Now, go wash yourself. No, you missed it. Jesus did not do this. I'm gonna take you by your hand. I'm going to walk you myself, and I'm going to wash you. No, this is a guy who's doubly blind, and Jesus looks at him. Yeah, I already deposited in your life what you need. Now go wash yourself. No, 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 no. Not yet. Not yet, Pastor Mark. You got to first learn how to walk with your mess. There comes a season in your life. If you've never been there, well, well, glory be to Jesus. But if you've ever been in a moment in your life where you had, you had no idea when, where, why, how, but the only thing you had was a word from heaven. Is there anyone here who knows what it is to walk with the mess? Is there anyone who has ever been there that you did not know when, where, why, how, but you only knew who? And just like Job, you only knew one thing. I don't know why I'm going through this. I don't know when I'm going to come out of it. I don't know why this is happening, but I do know one thing. I know that my Redeemer liveth. All I know is who. I know who. I know that the promises of God are yes and amen. I know that no weapon formed against me will prosper. I know that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I know that if I receive him, me and my house will be saved. I know that the latter glory will be greater than the former glory. Is there anybody here that knows? Is there anybody here who has been there? So when you look like this, please, Do not engage yourself in a perpetual posture, in a fetal position. No, 
Learn to stand up and walk with it. Walk, baby, walk. This is a word for someone right now. I don't care what hell you're going through right now. Walk, baby, walk. Walk, walk, walk. I said walk. There's a deposit inside of you. There's favor inside of you. There's purpose inside of you. There's destiny inside of you. There's eternity inside of you. There's grace and glory inside of you. Don't stay stuck. Get up and start walking. Walk. Jesus told them walk. Jesus told them walk. Sometimes you got to go through to get to. Sometimes you have to walk with your mess to get to your miracle. If you know what I'm talking about, raise your hands. If you've ever been there, raise both hands. If you know, to, if you know, if you know that you know what it is to walk when things are not pristine and perfect, raise both hands and a foot. If you know that you know that you know that when others would have criticized you and judged you, you kept on walking because the word of God in you was greater than the hell you were going through. Am I preaching to anybody right here? Is there anybody here who has been through a process that now you can look back and say, I, I did not understand what I was going through, but I thank God that he saw me through, that I kept on walking. I didn't have the strength for the wherewithal or the fortitude, but the Spirit of God told me to keep on walking. Is there anybody here who kept on praying? Is there anybody here who kept on praising? Is there anybody here who kept on believing? If that's you, raise your hands. Because I have a word for you. I want you to hear me. Ooh, here it is. He, ha, ha, ooh. The only thing he had, I mean, the guy was doubly blind. And Jesus says, go wash yourself. Are you kidding me? All he had was the voice of God. <sighs> Who speaks into you? It's much more important than who speaks about you. Let me say that one more time for the hearing impaired. Who speaks into you is infinitely times more important than who speaks about you. When I was immature, and I was, I cared about who was speaking about me. But then I got to an age where I no, I no longer gave a holy hoot, and I didn't care about who spoke about me, but I do care about who speaks into me. Are you with me right now? When the Alexa Echo was new, I received it in a gift somewhere preaching in Australia somewhere. I got a gift. When the Alexa Echo was brand new, just came out, brought it home. True story, my wife could attest to this, brought it home. Set it up Saturday night. Sunday went to church, went to our first service. My wife stuck around, took her car to the second service. I turned on Alexa, I had it all set up for me. So the morning, I left Sunday morning. I get a call, it never happens. I'm on my way to church and, and I'm, I'm driving to church. I get a call from my wife, my cell phone, Bluetooth, boom. She says, this thing won't turn off. I go, what thing? She goes, your Alexa. By the way, that's scandalous, my Alexa. Totally. I go, what do you mean? Your, my, your Alexa won't turn off. I go, honey, what are you talking about? She said, I saw what you did yesterday. So it's on and the way you have it programmed. So it kept on doing the whole, the whole thing and it wouldn't turn off. And it's really irritating me. And so what did you do, honey? I said what you said. I said, Alexa, disable when it, it turned off. Nothing. I even went Spanish. Alexa, callate la boca. Nothing happened. I thought you were pro, and she says, she, honest to God, she goes, nothing will turn it off. And I go, honey, you don't seem to get it. The way I programmed Alexa is Alexa will only, only respond. It's called voice recognition. So uh, voice recognition, uh, voice recognition. Alexa only responds when she recognizes my voice. She doesn't respond to unauthorized voices. I'm preaching to somebody. If Alexa knows better not to respond to unauthorized voices, why are you responding to someone or something that doesn't have authority to speak into your life? Are you with me right now? If they're not speaking love, truth, grace, hope, holiness, healing, do not listen to voices that are not authorized to speak into your life. Are you with me? All right, let's do this. Here's what I want you to do. It's a prophetic act. It is. Um, you're going to go wash yourself. When I say down, put your hand here, left hand side. Pastor Nate, help me out here with his other hand. Now, 
When I say now, I want you to remove the mud, which is actually clay. Yeah, because clay is moldable and there's a purpose. So you're, you're going to remove it. And your mess is about to become your miracle. So I want to I want to speak prophetically to everyone here and declare that your mess is about to become your miracle. Let me say that one more time. Whatever is messy is about to be miraculous in your life. I dare you to look at someone who you like around you and declare your mess is about to become your miracle. Tell the other person your mess is about to become your miracle. Your mess is about to become your miracle. Your mess is about to become your miracle. Whatever's messy is about to become miraculous. But so one more time, did Jesus wash him? What did Jesus tell him to do? Ladies and gentlemen, we got to push back on this entitlement mindset. We got to push back on the idea that everything, ladies, gentlemen, Christ already died for us. There are things that we have to learn to do by ourselves. That is a countercultural message in 2019. But there are things you need to learn to do by yourself. You need to learn to pray for yourself. You need to stop depending on someone else for your breakthrough. Stop depending on someone else for your joy. Stop depending on someone else for your spiritual walk. You need to learn to pray for yourself. Matter of fact, not only pray for yourself, you need to learn to prophesy to yourself. Pastor Sam, I'm waiting for a word. I'm waiting for a word. I'm waiting for a word. I'm not, I'm waiting for a word. I'm not going to come out of my pit until I get a word. Are you kidding me? All you need to do is look at yourself in the mirror. Look at yourself. I'm going to teach you how to do it. Look at yourself and say, you, I got a word of God for you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What God has started, he will finish. Prophesy to yourself. You need to learn to rebuke yourself. When you are not in the right place spiritually, mentally, emotionally, relationally, financially, rebuke yourself and say, hold on a second, sunshine. That's not what God made you for. You are what you tolerate. Get out of that place. I rebuke you, you, you. I rebuke every lie of the enemy that's trying to hold you back. Come out of it. And by the way, if you're old school, and that's okay to be old school, you need to learn to anoint yourself. And that may be a little old school for some people, but I don't really care. You need to get some oil, get some oil, and go. You are anointed in the name of Jesus. You are full of the Holy Spirit. You are full of the glory of God. You are full of the purpose of God. Are there any anointed people in the house here tonight? Let me ask one more time. Are there any anointed people in the house here tonight? All right, let's do it. Ready? It's a prophetic act. I want you to wash yourself. And as you do this, watch this, watch this. Ready? No, 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 no. Not yet. When you do this, the mud, the mess is going to come off families and homes and marriages and relationships and health circumstances and spiritual journeys. I promise you, you're about to see what you've never seen before. That's not like hype. That's not hype. There was a television network whose name you recognize, Secular, who interviewed my family for a television program that you secular program, one of the world's major networks. And it will be a different program from others that we have seen within our circle. Very unique, actually. Very, very unique, very redemptive, very powerful. At the end of the day, they, there was an insistence, a de facto insistence that I would, I would have to stop being so obsessed with Jesus. <laughs> Pastor Sam, we love you. People on both sides of the aisle, they really like you, they respect you your integrity, your commitment, your passion, but wherever you go, you're, you're just obsessed with saying Jesus. You're always talking about Jesus, and we, we can't have that. You need, you need to go generic on us, and you need to create some space for other stuff. And, and I refuse. And, and, I, and, and, and I refuse. Let me land this. So I refuse. So 
they, they, so then all of a sudden, they, they canceled everything. Pfft, all done. We went through production meetings, I mean, the calls, you name, we're about to sign, it's all gone. And, and the, the, the mess of people telling me, man, dude, you blew it. You're such a Jesus freak. You should have gone generic and gone rogue. And at least you would have, you would have been light. And you would have been, your spirit will speak by itself, even if you don't mention Jesus or God or like your, your aroma. What does that mean? So the mess, but I walked with it. I walked with it and said, but God gave me a word. But God gave me a word, but God gave me a word, but God gave me a word. And all of a sudden, I'm on a flight from Dallas to Sacramento, and I get this RSS feed from St. Louis Dispatch, this story, a secular news story about a little boy who had died, who went through a lake and froze a lake and died. And I read it, and I went, the Holy Spirit hit me and said, that, 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 that. And the next day I preached about it, Sunday I preached in church, that week I preached on, on television network and, and preached on it, and, and then the mom gives me a DM through Facebook and says, Pastor Sam, I'm a fan and a follower, you're talking about me, can you give me a call because you're shortchanging me? I went, what? I gave her a call, she says, stop saying that my son died for 15 minutes, he didn't. I go, I'm sorry, was I wrong? Was the newspaper wrong? She went, no, it doesn't say, my son was actually dead for an hour. And I went, no way. She went, yes way. I go, is it medically verifiable? Absolutely, sir. Do you have documentation? Yes. And then all of a sudden, we went through a due diligence process. Every doctor signed off and said, this boy was dead for over an hour, heart dead, brain dead. And I went, wait a second, what happened? And the mom, and I read the newspaper, it says, mom prayed. I said, ma'am, what did you really say? She said, well, Pastor Sam, I walked in there. I heard my son was dead. He was dead for over an hour. So I just came from a Bethmore Bible study, and I walked in there. And what did you do, ma'am? Well, I walked in there. Did, did you say anything else? No. Oh, what, what were the exact words? I need to know. Integrity is everything. They're going to swear to sign off on this. He could pass the stamp. All the doctors and nurses will sign off. What did you say? I walked in there. I saw my son dead. And he was dead for an hour. So, but God gave me a promise about my son that he was going to do great things. and do great. So, God, so I was, I walked, she walked with her mess. So she, she, so she said, well, what did you say, man? She said, what did I say? This is what I said. Holy Spirit, bring my son back to life. Well, not five minutes later, not four minutes later, not three minutes later, not two minutes later, not even one minute later. The moment she said, Holy Spirit, bring my son back to life, period, every machine in that room turned on. Somebody shout, there is power in the name of Jesus. You got to learn to walk with your mess. Walk with the mess. Stand with me. Those that are not standing, stand with me. Are you ready? All right. Your mess is about to become your miracle. He was carrying the miracle that required activation. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, go watch. When you wash yourself now, I'm believing in Jesus' name that upon every single family, miracles will be activated. The mess is removed. The mess becomes a miracle. Oh, let me just give a word for someone here. Your children will never live in your mess. But they will thrive from your miracle. Are you ready? When I count the three, I want you to watch. God did it for me. He's going to do it for every single person here who believes. The mess is about to become the miracle. When I count the three, wash your eyes. Don't open them up yet. Just take them off. One, two, three, now, go. Take it off. Take it off. Don't open your eyes yet, but just continue to take that. Here. That's going to help me out here. Clean the, clean the eyes off now. Clean, don't open up your eyes yet. Don't open up your eyes yet, because there's a reason for that. When I tell you, in Jesus' name, open up your eyes. Everybody lift up your hands. Pastor Nate, lift this up for a second here. This nation currently looks like this. There's a move of the Spirit of God. In, 19, in 1906, there was an anarchist movement across the world that was permeating American society. The newspaper headlines were talking about the anarchists. This preceded 
Lenin's Bolshevik Revolution of 1917 in Russia, but it was the groundwork. It was the, the Marxist, Engels, social Darwinistic ideology. 1906, it looked like the world was falling apart. There were riots everywhere, in a, in, I mean everywhere around the world. Assassination, mass murders, do your due diligence. All of a sudden, in Los Angeles, a, a one-eyed black Methodist preacher with white people, Latino people, in 1906 got together in a place called Azusa. And they prayed. And the Holy Spirit invaded to such a degree. Now, now there are over 600 million Holy Ghost filled people around the world. Spirit empowered. In the 1960s, there were riots in Newark, Oakland, Detroit, race relations, political ambiguity. This America looked like this. All of a sudden, something called the Jesus Movement took place. More people came to Christ in that time span than in any other time in global history, ever. What am I telling you? Lift, up, lift that up again one more time. That's what America looks like right now. When I tell you now, you're gonna open up your eyes. I'm speaking prophetically. Not just over Tulsa and Victory, but over America. When you open up your eyes, America, we're gonna open up our eyes to an outpouring of the power of Jesus like we have never seen. I don't know, I sense the, the Spirit of God now. You, we're about to see entire a harvest of people. We're about to see entire families come to Christ. We're about to see Jesus encounters at Starbucks all across America. I'm not making this up. We're about to see such much. The power of God will be so strong on you that when you walk into a room, I kid you not, every devil, demon, legion, principality, and power of darkness will flee. Are you ready? We're about to see revival. We're about to see awakening. We're about to see the glory of Jesus. We're about to see signs and wonders. So ready? At the count of three, open up your eyes. We open up our eyes in our families, our homes, our marriages, our ministries, our communities, our churches. We're about to see the glory. We're about to see us like we've never seen ourselves before. Holy, healed, healthy, happy, humble, hungry, and honoring. All in the name of Jesus. Ready? Here we go. He opens up his eyes. You open up your eyes and you see the glory of God in you, with you, and through you like never before and change the world. One, two, three, open up your eyes. Somebody give God a shout of praise. I leave you. Now you close your eyes and lift up your hands. I'm gonna give the mic to Pastor. If you say, Pastor Sammy Rodriguez, this message was all me. I mean, 192.5% me. Pastor Sam, I wanna open up my eyes to see what I've never seen before. I'm tired of seeing, I'm tired of seeing realities, constructs, things around me and in me that do not line up with the will of the Word of God for my life. I'm tired of seeing the enemy's lies, triumph. I'm tired of seeing perpetual brokenness and, I'm tired of seeing excuses. I want to see the fullness of God's purpose revealed. I want to see me holy, healed, healthy, happy, humble, hungry, and honoring. I want those seven H's. I want to see me. And I've been dependent on others. If this word was for you, and you need your mess to become your miracle, I'm going to count the three. That's what I do. And I'm going to need you to come out of your seat. I'm going to give it to pastor and expedite the process. If you have to think about it, it's not you. And if, you, if you're ready to see your mess become your miracle, I mean, do what you have to get out of your seat. I promise you today is the day that your mess becomes your miracle. One, two, three, come out right now, quickly. This is your day. This is your day. Your mess becomes your miracle. This is the day in your family, in your home, in your marriage, in your ministry, in your calling, in your health, in your finances, in your destiny. I've been there, man. I've been there. I've lived it. I know what it is to walk with my... I know what it is to be there. Come, 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 come. Come in the name of Jesus. Work your way. Break through the crowd. Go wash yourself. Go, go, go. The blood of Jesus cleanses you. The blood of Jesus transforms you.
come. Pastor, where are you, Pastor? Where's Pastor Paul? Come, come quickly. Where's Pastor Paul? Was he raptured? Come up here. Pastor Ashley, where are you, sweetie? Come up here. Come up, come up, come up, come up, come up. Y'all here, come up. You hear me? I'm gonna give it. Whether you invite me again or not, it doesn't matter. I have, I have an assignment. In the green room, this is not like the norm. It, it's the norm, but it isn't. My point to you is just, why did God have me here after everything that happened? And it's not about San Rodriguez, it's about you. I'm just, it's about you. You need to hear me, it's gonna sound awkward. Don't really care, been there, lived it out. I've seen too much, I've experienced too much of the power of God. I want you to hear me. You write it down, it's being recorded. God is going to exponentially, and I mean exponentially, amplify the influence of this house and your ministry. And I don't mean like a little bit. I mean, you're about to go viral on steroids. What if I tell you that, that, that this house and this ministry, that you all, you've been assigned and designated by God to serve as a major conduit of reconciliation, restoration, and healing. What if I tell you that God placed you on this planet at this time to heal this nation? No, no, I, I, that's not like rhetoric. It's not, no, so help me God, I want you to hear me. This church will be, it already is, but I'm talking about at a different level. You have no idea what's about to happen next. The influence anointing on you is about to, I mean, it's gonna grow, and I mean explode. There's an acceleration on it. it this, is, this is way, way beyond anything you could ever imagine or ask for. I mean, the words that come out of this house will literally shift atmospheres. How about this? This is going to sound really awkward. There are Elishas that will never be released until you place your mantles upon them. God's going to bring you a generation of Elishas like we preached two years ago that pushed the plow. Your job is to be filled with the Holy Spirit and recognize who they are, anoint them, and release them to change the world. This church, in Jesus' name, will be one of... I'm even going to give numbers. I don't care if people don't like that. I'm going to give you a gift. This church will be one of the top 12 most influential churches on planet Earth. Critical for writing the narrative of Christianity in the 21st century. You have no idea. You're part of an awakening. God's going to show up here. I see a move of God here. I see the parking lot filled. Oh, are you filled? I see people lining up from the nation because the power of heaven invaded this are you with me? God's about to do something amazing. And he's been preparing you. And he's been preparing you and he's been preparing you in many different ways, privately and publicly. He's been preparing you for such a time as this because you are about to see what you've never seen before. And victory's about to see what you've never, and boy, have you ever seen great things. But you're about to see what you've never seen before. Now lift up your hands. Father, I, give me your hands. Give me your hands. Oh God, I feel this so strong. Oh wow. Oh wow. Truly now is the time upon you both in Jesus name church with your hands saints with your hands lifted high oh wow Woo. I sense the power of God give me Open up your eyes, look at me for a second. I'm just, I gotta give you this. 
these terms seem archaic but they're not you're going to be these, oh, you're recording this you will be used to reintroduce generations to the power of the blood of Jesus you're going to teach emerging generations that there's power to cover their lives their families to cover it sounds old school to some you're literally going to ignite generations to teach that you are covered by the blood of Jesus this church will be known not just for the signs and wonders and favor and blessings and the word of God and the confession and the grace but the power of the, every family is covered by the blood of Jesus and you and your children's children and your children's children's children so I just want to release this upon you both Heavenly Father you gave me a word for this house so go wash yourself your messy miracles Lord you're about to do something even greater this house is about to see what it's never seen before and boy have they ever seen great things that's a crazy thing to say in this house pastor Day, help me out here so I release that impartation I release that spiritual authorization, that anointing. Matter of fact, the keys to shift the atmosphere, the harvest that will be released now in this season. I release it. Your prophetic anointing increases exponentially. You're a Deborah and an Esther. The words that come out of your mouth will ignite an entire generation. My God, your words, your words, your literally your words. You, the Lord says you have favor with the king. Whatever you ask, you will receive. You are favored like Esther. That anointing is on you to prophesy, to speak truth. Matter of fact, I hear the Lord saying, devils and demons tremble when you show up because of what you carry. You have holy authority. Holy authority. In Jesus' name, right now, I release the fullness of this word. Cover it with the blood. Fulfill it for your glory in the name of Jesus. Church, somebody shout amen. amen. Stay right here, let me pray for you. Y'all raise your hands. Father, right now, make every mess a miracle. Every messy area, make it a miraculous area. I speak your authority, your power, the fulfillment of your purpose. Lord, we bind and rebuke and cast out every lie of the enemy. We take authority over everything that is against your will and your word. We cast it out. And we decree and declare that by the time we get home, wherever there was a mess, there will be a miracle. So Lord, in Jesus' name, upon every single person here right now, open their eyes to see your glory in each respective life, in us, with us, and through us like we have never seen before. We will see more signs and wonders, healings and miracles, works and deeds, goodness and mercy, and the fullness of the grace-filled work of Jesus shining through us than ever before. And one more thing, God, more people will come to you as Lord and Savior, will be saved and delivered through our testimony than ever before. In Jesus' name, if you believe it, say in Jesus' name, my mess just became my miracle. So victory, God bless you. We love you. We bless you. Let's do one thing together. Let's go change the world. God bless you. God keep you.